Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE on the ground. Covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, we are here in Seattle for a special CUBE on the ground coverage of Cloud Native Con and KubeCon, really born out of the KubeCon last year, now called Cloud Native Con. Really great event, dynamic, a lot of developers here. This is where the, where the players are. It's really one of those events that's really special and, and uh, we've been here all day, getting ready to get kicked out of the room. There's a, the party's going to kick off at seven o'clock. There's an election going on. Um, the numbers are crazy. Uh, and, and of course, we have the CEO of CoreOS, Alex Polvi, who's here. He's been on theCUBE many times. Um, CoreOS, one of the main players in what is the biggest trend of the past few years that has really catapulted cloud and the developers together. Certainly in the enterprise and the cloud is containers and now Kubernetes. Great to see you. Great to see you, um, You guys have been in the heart of the battle and part of the growth and the journey. It's been a battle, it's been fun. You have scar tissue, you guys have, you know, Docker's been out there, you guys have been there, you've been at war, you've been friends, it's frenemies. So in the spirit of growth, this is what's happening in the industry, but more than ever, now you're starting to see an acceleration. Yeah. An acceleration with Kubernetes as a catalyst. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on this trend, because now the container mojo is out there, people get it, yep. they see the value. Now they go, okay, with Kubernetes, this brings me a primitive at an abstraction that I could work with. Yep. How is that changing the game right now? I think we're going through the biggest transformation we've seen in infrastructure since cloud was invented. So you know, you, you have it on these cycles and cloud, you know, while Amazon um, has been going for what, 10 years, Ten years now yeah. almost, right? And so naturally you'll see things emerge and what's happening now is a, you know, this kind of new layer popping out um, and you know, containers and distributed systems are, I, I believe are the next major area of infrastructure investment um, beyond cloud itself. So talk about the open source community role here because now you're starting to see the open source community get on this. We had Jim Walker who was on, who works uh, in your team, um, ex Hortonworks guy, knows the big data space, seen that movie before, commenting that most of the people born after 2000 um, don't even know what loading Linux on a machine is, that they're right. born cloud native. And so this is a new dynamic that cloud gives more options for invention, a theme we're hearing here, mm -hmm. solving these unknown problems, creating value. Mm -hmm. So whoever can give me the best speedboat to that wins, right? I mean, this is what we're seeing. Your mm -hmm. thoughts on, on the, the community's role in propelling and, and keeping in check, by the way, any potentially bad behavior. Sure, I, I think uh, the open source community that we have around Kubernetes and kind of all the cloud native work, it's great for a number of reasons. One, we've kind of through you know, Cloud Native Computing Foundation and kind of just a conscious effort to have um, really a kind of company neutral um, open source ecosystem has caused you know, a, an adoption of all this stuff. It's, you know, it's becoming like a Linux or becoming, you know, I think OpenStack has actually did a pretty good job of this, of creating a very vendor neutral um, kind of ecosystem around it. Um, and we're doing it again uh, around Kubernetes and the associated projects around it. Uh, one of the big, things that's going on here is it is driven out of the spirit of technical excellence as well. Like these open source projects are the real deal. They are great pieces of software um, that are being built. So I think the combination of the of like this yeah. this community as well as like software actually being a, a great piece of technology coming out of it is really going to propel it forward. We had Dan Kahn earlier who's the executive director. He talked about the IETF and how that was shaped some of the early internet standards, mm -hmm. you looked at some of the architectural decisions, there was no dogma. I mean, dogma kills communities. Right. Um, and they don't want that. So they're going to create a separation. There's always going to be dogma at some level, it's conflict, but conflict is discourse is good in communities mm -hmm. at some level. Yeah. Um, what is that vision for the technical excellence now? Because it certainly is a race. Your thoughts there, and certainly we've seen this playbook on Docker has trying to go for that management orchestration layer. You guys have a strategy. People have to make money. Right. right. At some point, the playbooks have to change from being, we do service mm -hmm. and support. We have an open core and we're going to try to do some, you know, mangling of licensing. Your right. thoughts on, you know, how people are going to make money. Yeah, I mean, so on this open community side of things, I have a crazy theory for you. And I think this one's a little bit further out. That's okay. okay? Still, things are happening on the election yeah. that I blew my mind. I thought Hillary's going to win by a landslide. Go crazy. So Amazon has actually become both one of the biggest proponents of open source software. It's one of the places where you can get, you know, 
open source databases and open source Linux and all this stuff as easily as possible. At the same time, if you're an open source company, they're one of your like biggest threats because you're worried that Amazon is just going to like go build your service. I mean, look, we've seen it across every open source company that has any reasonable amount of traction. Amazon will just go build a service that competes with it. Now, the tricky thing with Amazon is all their APIs and management are very Amazon specific, and there aren't ways to get it in other in other ways. We've kind of seen this game before, similar to how you know there's. Microsoft and Windows with Linux, I believe that Amazon might be kind of becoming this such a powerhouse and so dominated in this space that you're going to almost see a, an open source backlash around it. And I could see Kubernetes being a key part of that. In the same way that we talk about Kubernetes as a as a you know a Linux for a distributed system, it's you know in a way like an open cloud. You know, it's it allows you to build these cloud services in a similar way that Amazon has these higher level services um, that work in any environment that are built around open standards that encourage the use of just upstream open source projects. And so far, like Amazon has not really been villainized at all, and I don't think they should be. I well, think they, they've done amazing things. And they're not grandstanding, things. so I think they're right. kind of bunkering in, just going squirreling for away just all this. Keep it going. <laughs> it's like, keep ripping. <laughs> Why even say anything? <laughs> right. You're kicking ass. Exactly. You know, put the heat shield up and just drive fast. Right. right? I, I feel mean, like at some point the community is going to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> we have so yeah, many we're, we're feeling basket. fleece. The numbers are out there. And it's a proprietary Well, first of all, Dave Vellante and, pointed uh, out that their 25% um, uh, reporting of was not was gap. The non-gap numbers are even higher. Right. So that's real profit. That's real EBITDA. So, that's so that they are they giving it back to the community? That's your question. So well, I think the backlash is not only giving back to the community with either either wealth creation and ecosystem flourishing, but you're talking about software. I think it's a cycle. Like people yeah. want something new to emerge, but at the same time you don't want all your eggs in one basket. So you know it's like Well I think your thing is plausible. Let's just go down and play out your your crazy scenario. So Linux was started because of the mini computer proprietary Gnosis and the expensive hardware. Mm -hmm. So if Amazon becomes that version of that 800 pound gorilla that's similar to the mini computer proprietary network operating systems and gear. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not, a scenario. Not too wild. Okay, so what's next for you guys? Give us the update on CoreOS. What are you guys doing? What's the hot area? What are you guys doing? What's the update real quick? Sure. So. The last three, three and a half years, we've been shepherding along this whole space, containers, distributed system, Kubernetes, Docker, Rocket, Corvus, Linux, like all sorts of stuff. We finally got to the point where like our initial kind of groundwork of the distributed platform is all in place and we can start using it. It's like we got iOS or Android to boot and now we can like start building apps. <laughs> and last week we released our first set of apps that I think really paint the vision of where these things are going. It's this concept called operators and it's where we're encoding kind of the operational side of, of like the things that human sysadmin would do to run a piece of uh, open source software, we're encoding that into an application, and it's called an operator, and it can do things like upgrade a cluster, or back it up, um, or scale it up and down. Yeah. Same things that uh, operator like an agent. Like, like an agent, like exactly. Like and it's the management, it's these management components that yeah. we think are going to give companies a ton of leverage to be able to run lots of So when and lots did you guys ship this, this recently? Yeah, we shipped um, a, our first couple, one for Etcd and then one for Prometheus uh, last week. It's just their new open source so project. So it's like getting a new car and taking it around the track, right? right. You, get in, you guys are getting excited. Well, in a way, <laughs> we're, we're calling this kind of whole concept self-driving infrastructure. Just like you would have an <laughs> operator sitting there driving your yeah. car, you know, we, we can now put software in there to kind of help take care of the, the stuff, uh, the functionality that a, an operator would do to give well, them Well, I think that's a great, moving. great strategy. We've just had IBM's World of Watson and, the, you know, also they changed their event from Insight to Watson, that's the big, hmm. big uh, hype. Customers are responding to it. They love this cognitive AI vision of self-driving infrastructure or you know stuff taking care of itself and mm -hmm. focusing on value. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the weeds right now that seems to be automatable. Yeah, look, <laughs> two, two weeks ago, we had two huge vulnerabilities come out, one on the Linux kernel and one on Kubernetes. And every ops team in the world had to drop what they were doing and go fix that. And they stopped making progress on their business and whatever thing they were trying to deliver and had to go deal with this fire. We can write programs to fix that stuff. And we should. And it'll lead to a more efficient business and it'll also lead to yeah. a more secure web in general if those things yeah. just get patched and updated automatically. Yeah, that's great. That's a good crime. And the DDoS attack with the IoT was even more pedestrian and worse <laughs> than the like same issue. <laughs> it's it's like updates. <laughs> update your software IoT. <laughs> like, updates. Yeah, updates. I think it was probably it. some eight year old saying, ooh, let's just take down, oh, that's a Passwords open and it just came in. I mean, that's how bad, easy that hack was. Yeah. I mean, and still penetrates. So, it's tons mess. of work to get done to your Yes. Point. Alex, thanks for coming on the cube here on the ground. Um, that's a wrap here for today. It was a long day. Great to see you uh, and, and congratulations on your success. I'm John Furrier. You're watching the cube on the ground here for KubeCon and CloudNativeCom. Thanks for watching. Oh.